Hello viewers, welcome to today's tutorial. My name is Engineer Obaga. Today we want to be dealing on the manual design of bridges and uh, we are going to be dealing with autotropic plate method uh, using the Morris and Little method of lateral load distribution. And we are also going to talk about uh, the principles involved in the Morris and Little method. Now, before we go into the Morris and Little method, uh, we must know, first of all, that uh, the autotropic plate method of bridge design involves autotropic plate itself uh, being used to design the bridge. Now, what does that imply? It implies that the entire bridge superstructure comprises of the bridge deck, slab, and the beam. Uh, this includes the longitudinal beam and the transverse beam is converted to an equivalent autotropic plate. Okay, so now the properties of the plate, automatically, the properties of the beam grids automatically becomes the property of the plate. The properties in question we are talking about is the flexoria uh, property uh, and the torsional property of the bridge deck. All right, now because of the complexity in the uh, arrangement of the beam deck, uh, the method involves the use of certain uh, coefficients. And these coefficients are used to distribute life load on uh, beams. Okay, so now before we continue, remember that in our previous video, we treated uh, the determination of sectional properties of a beam and slab bridge uh, like we have on the board. In that video, we were able to establish the how to determine the torsional properties of the longitudinal section of the bridge deck, uh, bridge beam, and we quality did on well, quality worked on how we can also uh, determine that of the transverse section, which is the diaphragm. Now, remember that the essence of the diaphragm is to act as a stiffener on the deck. Now, the diaphragm can be applied at uh, equal spacing along the longitudinal direction of the bridge deck uh, but we must understand uh, that the primary work of the diaphragm is basically to reduce uh, the amount of torsional moment that will be induced on the deck due to eccentric load eccentric life load okay so this is the primary purpose of the diaphragm so of course if the diaphragm is going to be acting in the transverse direction of the deck, it means um, it's going to be acquiring certain amount of bending moment due to uh, torsion, torsional moment of the deck. Now, now in this case, in autotropic plate method, we are going to represent the entire deck system with an equivalent autotropic plate. Okay. Now, for us to do that, um, the properties of this particular uh, bridge deck need to be obtained. First of all, the properties like the moment of inertia, uh, the properties like the torsional initials of the, the eye section and the composite eye section and the diaphragm, the moment of inertia and also the torsional initials of the diaphragm will also be obtained. Now, the method, this method involves the use of certain curves now, the initial originator or investigators who worked on the method of autotropic plate for a bridge deck, uh, the first that first did something on it was Guyon. And uh, the Guyon method involved the use of certain tables comprises of um, uh, coefficient for load distribution. And uh, after Guyon, Massonet did some work. Uh, Guyon did, when Guyon carried out his experiment, uh, torsion wasn't take in, taken into consideration and it came out with its own. Now, Masonate also worked on it. In Masonate experiment, he was able to involve torsion because, of course, you cannot work on a bridge without talking about torsion uh, due to the nature of load, life load uh, that is acting on the bridge. There's likely to be a uh, torsion. All right, so a lot of experiment was carried out. Now, Another person that worked on this method was uh, uh, Rowe. Rowe carried out he, an experiment and um, he was able to work on these curves uh, that was produced by, uh, by uh, Guyon and Masonet. 
and uh, it was able to produce them. It was able to apply 10% increment of the moment uh, due to the effect of um, Poisson ratio. So the 10% increment of the moment was introduced by Rowe to take care of the effect of Poisson ratio, which was not accounted for in the first experiment. Of course, um, uh, Morris and Lee too were able to present uh, the coefficient in a curve, and that makes it easy. We can read off the values from uh, the curves. So a lot of uh, authors have worked on the autotropic plate method uh, from the beginning, and it has been improved. A very efficient method that can be used to analyze a beam. Unlike uh, other methods, which we are still going to talk about, talk about uh, is a very, very widely used method in the design of uh, bridges. Okay, so but today we are not going to deal with other methods. We just want to concentrate on uh, the autotropic plate method uh, using Morris and Little Curve and. Uh, we are going to see that now. Let's go back to what we have on the board. Um, we can see from the board uh, we have sections. Uh, the first one is uh, we have the external section of the bridge, which comprises of the cab. Uh, we have the internal section of the composite bridge, which comprises of the institute slab and the precast uh, eye section. And we have a section of the diaphragm on the other. Uh, right hand side okay so now why are we going to work on this uh in doing that in transforming the entire uh superstructure comprises of uh, longitudinal beam and transverse uh, uh diaphragm we are going to uh use a formula to get the equivalent uh width of the autotropic plate now the length of the autotropic plate remains the same but the equivalent width is likely to be different from uh, the actual width of the bridge deck. Now we can see from the board, uh, we have a little cantilever from the edges, which is about 0 0.6 on both sides. Uh, the center to center space, let's call it P. Uh, we have that to be 2.45. Now, uh, in our previous uh, video where we treated the uh, determination of section, remember that uh, we did work on this section and um, Though we were unable to do a calculation, show you a calculation on that, uh, but the moment of inertia, we did that in uh, one of our video where we treated how to use Start Pro to determine sectional properties of a grillage. Now we are not working on grillage; we are working, we are doing this design manually. So we needed a property. Now the difference between uh, the composite eye section at the middle of the board. And the, and the one we are going to use in our manual design is the modification factor. Uh, we have a modular ratio to transform this thing into a, a transform section. So, and that modular ratio is going to, we're going to have it by multiplying um, the composite section of 2.45 by 0 0.86. We've done that in our previous video. So what we're going to do now is just to obtain the moment of inertia for this section that we're going to use for the design. Now we're do not doing a computer design, so we're doing it manually, all right? So let's obtain the moment of initial of the transformed section, all right? So let's go over. Once we are, we're able to get that, we apply our formula. Now, what is our formula? So now the equivalent autotropic plate, this is the equivalent. Let's say this whole section becomes equal to this. For the difference, the span, let's call the span of the bridge to be 2A. And the width of the bridge, let's call it uh, 2B, okay? So this is the width of the bridge. Now, for us to get this 2B, which is the width of the bridge here, uh, the equivalent width, we don't know it, so let's just leave here open. Now, but the formula for determining the equivalent width is, let's get the formula. So uh, let's look at the equivalent uh, uh, width of the autotropic plates. Now, before we look at that, you can see I've uh, been able to resolve uh, the moment of inertia of the exterior uh, gada uh, without considering the curb. Uh, this is what we have. So, without considering the curb, we have uh, we have here to be 1.5, uh, 1.5965. Remember that from here down to this point, which is the centroid. 
of that shape to the cantilever side, which is 0 0.6. So um, we'll take the total transformed uh, flange of the in-situ slab, which is this. We'll have uh, it to be 1.596. By the time we modify it with a uh, uh, modification, by the time we modify it with our modular ratio of 0 0.86, we'll have 1.5965 as uh, the flange, all right? So the next step is let's use parallel axis to obtain uh, the moment of inertia of this section. Remember, we've got the moment of inertia of the external gather uh, when we have the curves on it. But now let's do it when we are not having the curves. So now if we are not putting the curves, this is what we have. Uh, the centroid is at a point uh, which is uh, 838.39 mm from the bottom of the composite section. So if we have that, we've already gotten that, which is the same thing as uh, uh, 0 uh, 0 0.8, 0 0.83939, okay? Uh, so from, uh, well, I call it E1, so from the centroid down to the bottom E1, uh, from the centroid down to the top, which is E2, we have that one to be 581.61, okay? So I've gotten this. Uh, let's just do a bit of uh, calculation to obtain the moment of inertia using parallel axis theorem. Uh, for the slab section, the moment of inertia due to the slab section, we know that uh, using parallel axis theory, the second moment of area plus uh, the centroid, the distance of the centroid, which is the center of the slab to the centroid of the entire shape, we give us 0 0.313 uh, meters. And the area of um, the in-situ slab, which is the area, which is this area, which is 1.59 times 0 0.2, uh, that gives us the area, which is this, which is 0.319. So we we'll have it here then. That center, the center of the slab to the neutral axis of the composite section, we give us this. So follow our parallel axis theorem. For the slab, we'll have the moment of inertia to be this. Due to the beam itself, we'll have the moment of inertia due to the beam to be this. Um, sorry, this is uh, 0 point, 0 0.12996, okay? So, we add up the two, moment of inertia due to the slab plus moment of inertia due to the beam. If we do that using parallel axis theory, we're going to have the total moment of inertia of the composite section uh, of the exterior uh, gather to be 0 0.1968, and so on and so forth. Okay, so that is exactly what we need to obtain the effective width of the slab. Now, remember the effective width of the slab, like I said, we are replacing the gather system with an equivalent autotropic plate. Now there are different ways we can do this. Now for this particular session, we have the formula to be uh, effective width becomes n minus two p plus two times um, moment of initial of exterior gather ratio, moment of initial of interior gather times p, where p represents our center to center spacing of the gathers, okay? Okay, so that is what we have. So if we apply that formula effectively, we'll have it as this. So doing that, we're going to have it as 14.14. Normally, the effective weight is usually greater than the actual weight of the of the deck, of this of the of the deck. Alright, so take note of that. It's always greater than it. Though in some cases, for example, like T sections uh, under certain conditions can have uh, the effective weight to be equal to the actual weight for T sections. Okay. Section, most, in most cases, under a particular condition, we'll have they are usually equal with the actual, the effective weight is usually equal to the actual weight of the slab, of the deck. Okay. So uh, now for, for beam and slab deck, beam and slab bridge, uh, some unmodified formula, we can have it to also be NP, where N represents 
uh, the center to center spacing of the beam and N symbolizes the number of beams present in the in the system. Okay. So in this case, but that is for a modified and unmodified section. But for a modified section like we've done, the formula remains uh, this. Okay. So we are going to work with this. So we know our B. So have we gotten our B? The next step we are going to take is to obtain uh, plug in what we call the Flesuria parameters um, and the torsional parameters, the values. We've already have moment of initia of our section, our composite section. We have the moment of initia of our longitudinal and transverse section, and as well, the torsional initias. We've also gotten them uh, in the torsional initia we got from previous calculations. So we're going to plug them into the formula for calculating uh, the the formula for calculating uh, the flexoria parameter. Now let's look at that formula. The formula says for the flexoria parameter, we have theta is equal to, have it as B over 2A, all right? B over 2A, uh, the fourth root of I over J, okay? So this gives us the, uh, the flexoria parameter. So this theta represents the flexoria parameter of the bridge. Now the torsional parameters, we can also obtain the torsional parameters using the formula for torsional parameters. I will have it as this. For torsional parameters, we have alpha equal to the shear modulus. We have uh, the square root of i dot j. Okay, so this gives us uh, the torsional parameters. So we are going to obtain this value. So we know what B stands for. We know A. So uh, our torsional parameters uh, we've gotten. So in obtaining these formulas, in our next class, we are going to apply them uh, to distribute loads on the bridge deck. Now stay tuned to this channel. I'll see you in our next class. Do well to subscribe to this channel if you do enjoy all all right so in our next class having gotten the effective weight of the deck with no b now the flexoria parameter which are theta is equals to b over 2a the fourth root of i over j and the torsional parameter is alpha and we have alpha to be uh, g shear modulus and uh, the torsional moments of initias for both the transverse and the longitudinal section and uh, we have i not and ij we'll get to know more about those parameters in our next class as we solve problem on these issues okay so uh we're going to be calling this off for today in our next video we are going to be looking at how we can apply the morris and little curve to solving problem uh load distribution in a bridge all right so if you do well i'll see you in our next the next class if you do enjoy this lecture please do where to subscribe to our channels i'll see you in our next video in our next class you all